This is the New York City subway. In 2018, the average weekday ridership was over 5 million people, and the MTA estimates 1.6 billion people ride it every year. With about 660 miles of track, the system is responsible for transporting millions of New Yorkers every day. It's the lifeblood of the city, but it's also notorious for being late it's been two hours. and downright disgusting. Two weeks ago, they started cleaning subway cars for the first time ever. You're not tricking anyone, New York subway. You're removing rat fight club that people take to work. But the New York City subway is going to look very different once we come out on the other side of this pandemic. And so will the rest of the country. The US has now hit 14.7% unemployment, the highest since the Great Depression. The airline industry has tanked, retail stores have gone under, and we're going to have to reimagine the way we see the world. But rather than focusing on how we got there, let's focus on what a post-coronavirus America will look like. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Public transportation is critical in moving people around. But if you've been on a subway during rush hour, you already know it's almost impossible to maintain any distance to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Let's look at three different subway systems of three major cities to see what the future looks like. The New York City subway, the Chicago L train, and the DC metro. Each city has been hit hard by the coronavirus, and each has experienced significant declines in ridership. New York has taken the approach to shut off the entire system early to allow for disinfecting to take place. Nick Cifuentes, the executive director of Tri-State Transportation Campaign, an advocacy group, says the city would grind to a halt without transit. So New York has begun experimenting with the possibility of using ultraviolet lamps to kill the virus or having commuters book a reservation before their travel. The Chicago L train has seen an 80% decrease in ridership, but still considerably higher on the south side of Chicago, in poorer and more diverse communities. It's reflective of a system that is vital to ensuring essential minimum wage workers can still get to work every day. The Chicago Transit Authority has begun looking at ultraviolet lamps, but expects ridership to remain down for a number of months even if case positivity numbers continue to fall. A look at the CTA's FY19 budget recommendations show a system in dire need of support while having survived on very little for a number of years. DC, on the other hand, has no plans to fully resume service until the spring of 2021, and has produced a plan that says they plan to implement frequent visible cleaning and disinfection and expect all passengers to wear face coverings. These already fragile government-run systems are being pushed to their financial limit by the coronavirus, but are so heavily relied upon by residents. And while airlines are not government-run, many are being pushed to their limit as well. And air travel will likely look different, with masks being a requirement, boarding processes looking different, and a race to show which airline can prove they disinfect the best. For this one, I needed some help, so I reached out to Megan Green, the global chief economist at Harvard University. She regularly appears on TV with CNBC or the BBC, and according to Green, retail and leisure are going to dramatically change. We got out a few hard data points. Um, today, actually, we saw retail sales and industrial production in the U.S., and um, they're worse than we've ever seen them. So it seems like the engines have kind of fallen off the economy. And we know that we're on quicksand. Um, we just don't know where the bottom is. Um, we can't even see it, even as we know we're not there yet. And so it's difficult to guess how deep the recession will be or what the shape of the recovery might look like. Here are the major retailers who have filed for bankruptcy. And it looks as though others will follow suit. The CDC recommends strict social distancing guidelines for retail stores, and masks will likely be an expectation. Green believes that the retail industry as we know it will dramatically shift. A lot of industries that we have had in the past are probably just never coming back. Um, so movie theaters might change a lot. So a lot of retail bricks and mortar stores that we're just never going to go back to. We're going to do all our ordering online going forward. This week, certain restaurants release plans for outdoor seating or socially distant spaces. But that isn't a reality that can be assumed for so many smaller businesses. Movie theaters also seem to be a thing of the past. Now you can binge movies and TV shows through streaming platforms from the comfort of your own home. 
the movie theater industry is now completely at risk. The line of work so heavily relies on customer interaction and low-wage workers that the entire industry will likely not look the same on the other side, which is why AMC CEO Adam Aaron is seeking federal relief aid. We need relief right now, and it's, there's a simple reason why. There are no revenues coming in the door, and the country's banking system is just overwhelmed with companies seeking uh, additional liquidity at the moment. So we're going to have to get liquidity from someplace if we all, in our industry, if we all have expenses and none of us have revenues. But while essential businesses and jobs must open, there is a more cautious approach around retail and leisure reopening because the risks outweigh the benefits. And that could see the entire industry shift in a dramatic fashion. Not everyone has the luxury of working from home or being able to take conference calls from their couch. Low wage, minimum wage, and hourly workers are desperate to see the economy reopen. And the adverse effects have shown through. Green believes epidemiology will heavily dictate what returning to normal looks like. So thousands of students will be graduating from university or already have graduated. Um, and they're graduating into some of the worst unemployment that we've seen in decades. Um, but the president says that we're going to rebound on the other side. Are there indications of this or is this false hope? Unfortunately, I think it's pretty unlikely that we'll rebound in the way that the president has indicated. Um, we'll recover at some point. Yes. I mean, this health crisis is temporary. Um, and a lot of it is dependent on epidemiology and not economics at all. But if we can contain the virus, then we can begin to recover. Secondly, I think, you know, life as normal just won't exist for us anymore, at least until we have a vaccine. So the idea that, well, I'll just go out again and resume normal activities, that's really unlikely now. To provide some temporary relief to workers, Congress passed multiple multi-billion dollar plans to put checks in the hands of people who need them most. And for employees who do have the ability to work from home and have done so successfully, the need to go back to a traditional office space may not be necessary. The World Economic Forum translated a plan earlier this month from the South Korean government about how to maintain offices and the measures that were taken in these spaces. That includes basic hygiene and long-term social distancing, all the way to ensuring there is proper airflow throughout a building or refraining from large meetings or business trips. This country as we know it is being shaken up, but the economic impact of the coronavirus has accelerated a lot of inevitabilities. Why go to a store when you can order online? No need to buy a movie ticket when your streaming subscriptions already includes the movie. Does it make sense to travel to Europe for a business trip when the same conversation can be had over Zoom? We are going to have to reimagine the post-COVID-19 United States, and the sooner we can adapt to those changes, the sooner we can settle into our new normal. So while you may be making a reservation for a restaurant in two months' time, remind yourself that you may be doing the same for your Monday morning commute into New York City.